Welcome back to the Hard Run Box News Corner. Today's episode is going to be a little different than the usual because I want to focus mostly on a single topic and do a bit of a deeper dive on it. I know there's been some news floating around this week, like the announcement of AMD's Threadripper Pro CPUs and the final specs for DDR5, but I really feel this other topic is worth covering. So you might have seen this series of tweets a few days ago from Tech Team GB because the story did blow up a bit. Tech Team GB is a smaller creator from the UK with both a website and YouTube channel, and unfortunately in the last few weeks, they've had a rather unsavory interaction with MSI, so let's get reading. The basic gist of the situation is Tech Team GB produced a negative review of the MSI Bravo 15, their latest AMD Ryzen 4000 gaming laptop, citing issues such as a poor display, high thermals, and a bad trackpad. This was all based on evidence and testing, as most tech reviewers do, showing data from benchmarks and experience with the product. When discussing these problems with MSI, a PR representative at the company did a number of things that just aren't acceptable. Number one, they offered to pay or essentially bribe Tech Team GB into not publishing the negative review. Often this will be framed as offering compensation or other phrasing. Number two, when the review was published, they requested Tech Team GB alter the title to make the video appear more neutral. Number three, when that request was declined, suggested that not cooperating with this request would hurt the relationship between Tech Team GB and MSI, potentially leading to no review samples or sponsorships in the future. And then number four, asked their partner in AMD to attempt to take down the video, in which AMD declined, saying the problem was the laptop and not Tech Team GB's review. Now, I don't think I need to say much about why these things are bad. I think everyone is aware that pain to make negative feedback go away is a huge no-no in the industry and that even attempting to alter the content after it's published is also an issue if the video content is factually correct or based on an opinion. This is also a just a really, really disappointing thing to read about. Steve and I were discussing this whole situation last night and we both feel pretty pissed off about this and what Tech Team GB had to go through with MSI. So I just wanna break down what's going on here, give some of our thoughts and share a few more stories about what is unfortunately quite a common occurrence in the media landscape. Naturally, these allegations from Tech Team GB are quite problematic and it actually goes a bit beyond what was posted in this Twitter thread. We had a private chat with Tech Team GB in the last few days and they provided their interactions with MSI and it is, yeah, not pretty reading. I'm not gonna publish any of that in this video, but this isn't just a small channel out there to get attention, you can be sure of that, MSI have, judging by these interactions, stuffed up big time with this situation, and in my opinion, the evidence is quite damning. So you might be thinking, and certainly the first question that comes to my mind is, well, surely MSI would know this as well. Why on earth would they attempt to pull this stuff, especially as it can, and likely has in this case, damaged their company's reputation if it becomes public? Not to let MSI off the hook, but basically when it comes to review samples, companies in their PR departments are looking to maximize their return on investment. They want to send out review units and get as much positive feedback as possible. Every positive piece of content is an important statistic or quote they can use and in a report to, say, higher management. The more of those positive pieces they can accumulate from sending out samples and working with reviewers, the better the PR person is doing their job in the eyes of the company and the better the company is gonna be overall. Negative reviews or negative coverage doesn't fit into this picture very well. A negative review, even if it is factually correct, hurts the company. So PR divisions are desperate to avoid this sort of coverage and this filters down the entire tree. PR management doesn't want negative reviews because it might seem like the PR department isn't doing their job, so in turn they don't want lower level staff causing, for lack of a better word, negative coverage. Depending on internal performance metrics for the PR team and individuals, this can create a situation where lower level staff will try anything to stop or manipulate that negative review. In some instances, it will be a rogue employee type of situation where, without authorization, a low-level employee will suggest some of these things, like review alterations, in an attempt to avoid scrutiny on their job. This would be an under-the-table sort of action. The employee suggests to change the review title. In return, the reviewer gets to keep receiving review samples. The employee gets to continue reporting how good of a job they are doing.
doing to management, and the reviewer is able to keep doing their job too. It's not a great situation, and certainly that employee should know better, but it may not be representative of how the company sees or treats reviewers. And to be fair to MSI, this does sound like what has occurred in this situation. Our interactions with MSI have always been quite positive, even after negative reviews. You might have remembered the X570 motherboard debacle where we tore MSI's low-end boards to shreds. MSI copped that criticism on the chin, they worked hard to create a better product, and happily gave us early samples of their new motherboards. And now, they have some of the best X570 boards on the market. This is what negative reviews are supposed to do, in addition to advising buyers on which products are worth their money. A good company hears the feedback and works hard on doing better next time. The people Tech Team GB were in contact with at MSI are different to the people we normally speak to, and I don't think this situation is representative of how MSI normally deals with negative coverage. In fact, one MSI employee told us that suggesting review alterations and especially paying to make negative reviews go away is strictly against company guidelines and would likely result in employment termination. However, I don't want to let MSI off the hook over this at all either, because it's MSI's job to ensure that they are hiring competent PR professionals that don't even try and bully reviewers over bad reviews. This sort of thing can crop up because of a lack of training, or a lack of internal oversight, or just a lack of checks during the hiring process. Now that this story has blown up, I'm sure MSI are cracking down on this, but it is a failing that it got to this point. Their standards needed to be better. The bigger issue for me though is not that MSI specifically attempted to bully Tech Team GB in this instance, it's that these sorts of problems are regularly faced by reviewers across the industry, and in particular, it impacts smaller creators who are less able to stand up to companies. We are in a lucky position that due to our channel's size and the wonderful support of our Patreons, we aren't as concerned about a company denying us review samples after a bad review. We can just buy the products anyway if they are of interest. But this is not the case for a smaller creator that relies on companies sending out review samples to do their job. Having an existential threat of review samples being withdrawn or advertising deals being pulled if a negative review is published makes the job of reviewers much more difficult. And this type of manipulation is unacceptable, it has to stop, and that's why we're speaking up about this now. And I don't think the general public realizes how often companies try to pull these sorts of tactics. In fact, I'm not sure even some of the companies are aware of what their lower level employees are trying to pull, so it's time to share some stories. The most recent case for us was regarding our coverage of the ASUS Tough Gaming A15. We initially published a negative review or analysis of the laptop, criticizing the thermal design and performance as well as the display. In our follow-up coverage, we said ASUS were very angry at this video without giving any further specifics. Well, that was really only the tip of the iceberg. Here's a snippet from our latest Patreon livestream where we discussed further details about what happened behind the scenes. And then to have a company the size of ASUS threaten us with legal action is not great, <laughs> to say the least. It wasn't really a fun time for Tim, um, you know, with a company basically saying where there's a – well, they didn't really say there was a good chance, but they said basically take the video down or risk legal action. So they're basically saying if we don't comply with their demands, they will take legal action, which I don't believe they have a leg to stand on, but – when it comes to legal action, that doesn't necessarily matter to how much of a yeah. pain in the ass that is for us. So there was all of that. Further on in the email chain, so first of all, when they sort of sent all this stuff, I was like, I'm not changing any of the video and especially not deleting the comments. Uh, yeah. I found the, the comment about the comments to be particularly ridiculous because they were sort of conflating user opinions, people who just comment on the video with our opinion and sort of saying, well, <laughs> yeah. it's your fault that people are disparaging ASUS, saying that they're incompetent or whatever in, in the comments, which is just totally ridiculous. So I was definitely never going to do that. Um, they also, throughout this process, sort of going back and forth, they started to criticize me personally and my credentials and, I don't know, experience as a product reviewer. It's basically saying stuff like, I don't have the qualifications or experience to criticize the product in the way that I did, saying that you know, I wouldn't understand how the product is designed, I wouldn't understand the best ways of, of things, you know, that things can be done. I don't want to rehash all of what we talked about here because it was quite a lengthy discussion. If you're interested in all of that discussion, you can sign up to our Patreon page and view the replay of that stream. 
On another recent occasion, a smaller creator who I won't name approached us privately regarding one of their more critical laptop reviews. Following this review, the company at hand tried to get said creator to modify the benchmark results in the review, making the comparison between the company's product and others appear more favorable. The creator declined this request. We had a good laugh about it. That said, I had actually tested the same product and came to the same conclusions, but I personally didn't receive the same request. So I was concerned that once again, a company was targeting the smaller guy. In the past year, we also learned of one of the larger companies in this industry offering to pay creators to produce positive content surrounding a product that we had criticized on the channel. We brought this matter to the attention of the company and told them flatly that it was dodgy and unacceptable, and the matter was solved internally. As far as we know, no paid content was produced. Late last year, a company under pressure from a partner tried to get us to remove a video entirely after we published some B-roll footage that they weren't happy with. Some of the suggestions for how to resolve this matter were utterly ridiculous and we declined them all. This video remains live on the channel completely unedited to this day. Just recently, after publishing our Z490 content that criticized ASRock's low-end boards, ASRock has completely gone silent and stopped answering our emails. We tweeted about this recently and suspect that we are blacklisted at the moment. This has forced us to purchase ASRock's B550 motherboards for our upcoming B550 performance evaluations, while all the other board partners currently are sampling at least some of their products. Around the launch of the RTX 2060, NVIDIA failed to sample us a GPU and gave us the runaround regarding information pre-release. While we don't know for sure, this might have been related to our critical coverage of the RTX series in the months prior, and Steve published a video at the time discussing the situation. After that video, the situation resolved itself, but really we shouldn't need to publish videos like that for action to be taken. These are just some of the incidents that I can remember that have occurred in the past year or so, and this sort of thing happens pretty much every year. Some companies will improve in this regard, others will fall back. Now, when it comes to our experiences with companies attempting to change or manipulate reviews, we always try and solve these things privately. Normally, all it requires is a simple email firmly saying no, and that's the end of it. We're not really interested in creating drama in the industry. We just want to do our jobs and produce accurate reviews without all this garbage, whether we're talking positive or negative reviews. But whenever we see these sorts of requests come our way, we're not really concerned about our own ability to you know, deny those requests and to produce reviews as we normally do, but we do get very concerned with how these companies are treating smaller creators. If they feel they can do it to us, or at least attempt it on us, how are they treating a smaller creator that doesn't have the capabilities to fight back? A big industry giants just going around and bullying the tech team GBs of the world without consequences? Are these threats causing nightmare situations for people just trying to do their jobs? Are we seeing a suppression of negative reviews as a result? Well, based on these continual stories, it seems that yes, some companies feel that they can do this to the smaller players and get away with it. We've been in that position before, and it's not acceptable. I also think it's worth pointing out that publishing negative content is some of the most difficult, stressful work that we do. When you post a positive review, you barely hear a peep out of the company, maybe a thanks, we enjoyed that review, but post something negative, the companies that take negative reviews poorly will subject you to lengthy email chains, they'll question the testing and sometimes your expertise or credibility, and they'll want to waste your time with hours upon hours of phone calls. Not every company does this, mind you. There are some out there who are very receptive to negative content and are willing to do better, and at times they do appreciate the honest feedback, or at least that's what they say. That's how it should go, but unfortunately, these instances can be rare, or at least rarer than we'd like. Not that our content should be free from scrutiny. Companies questioning certain aspects or results is par for the course, totally fair, we deal with that all the time. But when it moves into threats, bullying, lying, or just plain wasting our time, it's not on and it makes our job difficult. Another point I wanna bring up is that suggesting a creator is bringing up these issues to draw attention to themselves and boost views or whatever is not helpful and it actively hurts these discussions. 
any reviewer naming and shaming a company in this way is opening themselves up to serious legal consequences if they are making it up. Publishing this sort of info is a decision not taken lightly and is often a last resort, so it's important not to just dismiss the concerns as the person being a drama queen. I guess the point to this video is we're really sick of this stuff happening, and we're especially tired of the smaller guys having to bear the brunt of it. It hurts our industry, it hurts the ecosystem, and hurts trust on a number of levels, especially with the companies involved. That's it for this one. Probably not going to bring this up too often again as we'll continue to try and solve these things that we have with companies privately like we always do, but you know, occasionally it just gets a little bit too much and you need to make a video like this. As always, if you're interested in supporting the channel, we do have our Patreon page. Links are in the description below. Subscribe for more News Corner. We'll be back to regular news, not just talking about this sort of thing in the next episode, and I'll catch you in that next episode.